for the last 50 years, the construction industry has become less and less productive, despite the technologies that are out there. And when you compare that to the manufacturing industry, they've tripled their production. There's no reason that construction can't do the same. And over my years in the industry, I've been pretty fed up that I stand on the 10th floor of a 20-story building and going, how did we get here? Why have we got so many errors? Why is there so many compounding issues that we don't fix? Productivity is a main issue in this country, and we've got to fix it in the right way. In Australia, we operate in a very high-cost environment. We can't just solve problems by throwing people at them. Um, we have to work smarter. The Scandinavians, with their government, has implemented BIM. There is a 1% productivity waste versus Australia at 29%, and having a $7 billion capital direct waste every single year. A hundred years ago, we were using pen and paper. You jump up 50 years, we're using typewriters. Another 25, we're using computers and emails. Well, now we're at another stage. It's called BIM, Building Information Modeling. The interoperability between software platforms is highly challenging. The different platforms can actually begin to speak to each other. Through IFC, we use ARCHICAD, we use Revit, and likely have Tecla. We would be utilising IFC as our primary exchange validation format. I was sceptical, um, uh, to be honest, I thought it was nuts. And a year later, um, I'm, I'm happy to, to admit that I've been proven wrong. And I think we're proving it on this project where we're using a vast array of tools and they're all we're integrating and working together very, very tightly. You can only do that with an open format. 40 Hay Street is a multi-story office tower along with a roughly 360 room five-star hotel. Perth is really starting to show on the map as a center of excellence, a mecca for technology and innovative techniques. It's one of the most isolated cities in the world. It's also one of the most wealthiest. That there's, has more millionaires per capita than anywhere else. And investors have come in and they're pouring a lot of money into innovative technologies. Perth is the host of having the largest supercomputer in the Southern Hemisphere. And they have the largest BIM center in Australia. Our especially interest in this 480 project is how to use BIM to materialize the lean theory into the practical world. And no single tool has the answers to all the problems. So we're looking for the best of breed tools to come together and look how they can talk to each other seamlessly. Now having open source allows everyone to engage collaboratively in that platform. We can carry multiple sets of design alternatives which allow us to do value engineering that no one else has really been able to do. So our project leaders are now involved in a way that they've never been involved before. Now there's no more Chinese whispers. They're getting the direct information that they need. The methodology for delivering the documentation to the site is purely uh, to BIMX. Uh, we are contracted to even convert all of the Revit and Tecla and any other documentation that arrives 2D even uh, into BIMX. We have a workflow that we've now developed that works really well for us. The navigation of the documentation set is so simple and elegant in BIMX that even if they were standing in front of the drawings, they would prefer to use the iPad. Their foreman have really grabbed this with a, with a vengeance because it's saving them about 20 minutes per query. A round trip back to the site office is now not required. Schedule information, supply chain information, procurement information. Without the BIM, that is a massive data set that we have to try and interpret. If the government mandates a standard like this, it's going to be a catalyst for a lot of people. And we're seeing this in, in the UK. The impact of that and the take up of BIM, the improvement of interoperability and so on, everybody's winning. It's just an amazing take up. If only Australia could follow. Governments would be crazy not to adopt a, a non-proprietary interoperability standard because if they do go down that path, they, they're going to lock themselves into uh, being tied to some corporate entity that you have no idea what they plan to do to you. Whereas an, an international-standards-based deliverable, just about guaranteed it's going to be readable in 20, 30, 40 years' time from now. So if we can reduce waste, reduce errors, it's a value proposition, it's not about adding cost, it's actually going to save time and money. If we can achieve 4 to 5 percent reduction in waste, that's going to mean huge dollars. We think we can do better than that, so we'll see.